Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract, and we're using Zim at ZimJazz.com. Let's go take a look. And here we are at ZimJazz.com. It's a new site since the last basics. Oh, how exciting. So we're now on Zim version Zim. We figure it's going to be our final version of Zim. So after Zim Cat and Zim NFT, we move to Zim version Zim. And uh, here we are. So one of the things that we've had around for a while in Zim it can be found in the Learn section here. Oh, well, it can be found in the Learn section, but it can also be found at the, the bottom in the gold bars, it's called. And that is Zim Tips. I'm just looking for it now. Medium. Here it is, Zim Tips. Or indeed, this is a bad page to go to the bottom because we have to go past all these tutorials. Down here in the bottom, there's the tips right there in the gold bars. So if we hit on tips, one of the things that I don't think we've talked about yet in the basics, but is quite handy to know about is how to debug, how to figure out when something goes wrong, how do we make it right again. So there's a few tips in here that relate to that. Oh, one is errors right there. Uh, possibly ask might relate to it. And I think there was another one too. Uh, missing. Yeah, missing maybe. So if you try and uh, try and view something, you know, you run your code and it's missing, and we put it under the tip missing. <laughs> All right, so anyway, well, let's, see, let's see what they're missing. So when you're coding, sometimes things don't show up. So here are some reasons why. It's a bunch of reasons why things might not show up. All right, I'll just, uh, that, just sort of briefly go over that and show you that we've got that. And now we've also got zogging. So zogging is uh, logging to the console. So there's a thing called a console that we can use to ask questions like, are we here? <laughs> is this thing running? How much, how much is this? Is it, is it supposed to be, is the value of this variable what we're supposed to have? So that can be helpful to know as well. And zogging is definitely something that we use for for debugging and there's some examples and so right after that we have errors here and we use the console as well f12 to see the console i'm going to show you this in code we use the console to see what our errors are and sometimes the error messages are difficult to understand so uh, we have given a little you know a few examples of what an error might say and what probably that error might mean as well um, there's also some general debugging techniques that we can do. One of them is a nice big word here, simplify. So what you can do is you can comment out the code until it works again. So if, if your code isn't working, then comment out the new parts and hopefully go back to what was working. And that's another thing that when you're coding, you should always um, check to see if the code worked before you go too much further. So do a line or two of code and then check to see if it works. Do a line or two of code, check to see if it works. And that way you don't have maybe 10 or 20 lines of code and you're not sure what was broken because uh, you forgot to be checking as you went. All right. So anyway, those, those are some tips. Um, we also are here and we would love to help you. So zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. And you can ask us questions there. And like I said, we'd be happy to help you within reason. <laughs> we don't want to do your whole project for you, obviously. Um, and sometimes we'll offer suggestions as to how we solved the problems if we didn't, if we do indeed solve the problem. Uh, you know, as a tip, by the way, the way we solved this was we commented out these two lines and then it worked. So it was something in this line that, you know, we commented out something in that line that was broken. Alrighty, there you go. Um, that's sort of an overview of some of the documentation we have on errors. I'm not sure to tell you the truth if we ever did uh, any videos on debugging. I think we did, probably if we looked under the learn section here. Uh, let's just do a search for 
um, bug, maybe? Bugs, okay, so that's in Zim Kids. We have these things called bugs, and that's the only one that we found there, so that didn't help. Um, I thought one of these, maybe maybe these are pictures, so it doesn't have the word bug on it. Yeah, those are pictures, so let's have a look, see if we can find one. Do you see anything that says debugging there? Not yet. So this is the What Is series. It's uh, a little bit older, so it's got some, some JavaScript ES5 or JavaScript 5 code in it, uh, and maybe older versions of Zim as well in here. But these are all of the basics um, for things like, what is a string? What is a number? What's a variable? So if you're still wondering about those types of things, then you can come here and we talk to you about that in videos. I'm just going to go ahead to the, there, debugging right there. So here is a what is on debugging that you could check out as well. And uh, like I said, that will be slightly older code. And now we're doing as in basics on debugging again. But I bet you some of the same things will be in there. And it may be that you'll find things in this video that we forgot to talk about today <laughs> in this video. Uh, and vice versa. But anyway, there's another link to debugging, which may help you. Okay, and then these are the sort of more advanced what is series. And the more advanced videos and the more advanced Zim bits. I don't think there's a Zim bits on debugging. There is a Zim bits on the console. Probably one of the first ones right here, console. So let's go into some code and see how to find the console. Talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> All right, so we'll reduce this down. Here's some code. Uh, you remember how to find the code, right? We go to, uh, let's bring that back. Bring it back, put it down, bring it back. I'm gonna go up to the top here, hit code, and then hit copy on your template. Copy. Boop, boop. All right, once you copy, you can come back here and paste it in, and this is roughly the same code. We have a local template that we run in Atom. The local template points to local versions of Zim. Maybe I should just point out if, if uh, something like this happens, so ready, here, let's have a look at this. I'm gonna open it up in a browser. It seems to be broken. So this is what broken code will look like sometimes. Sometimes the code plays up to a certain point and shows you it, and then it doesn't go any further. It depends on the type of error. Sometimes it, nothing shows at all. And if nothing shows at all, then you want to go to the console. So I hit F12 and up comes the console. My console is on the right hand side, but you can dock the console in uh, different places. I can't remember how to do that top. No, um, this one, what does that say? Show console sidebar. Hmm. <laughs> one of these. Ah, here it is, right? Okay, so there's the docking of it. It may be that your console starts off like this. Usually, I like to dock the console. And where was that again? <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Verbose, warning, errors, uh, settings. No. This settings? No. I don't know. What am I looking at here? What the heck? Where'd my console go? This doesn't look like anything. Uh, okay, I'm closing that. <laughs> F12. F12. Console. Um, okay, so we've got two settings things. One of these somewhere was a way to dock it. Okay, there it is. The three dots. And then I'm going to dock on the right-hand side. So there we go. That's where I usually dock. And as you can see, you can drag it bigger and smaller. And also, just beware that there's other things in here. You see there's the elements that can take you through HTML elements. Well, on the canvas, we, we never use that. Here's the console, which we use a lot. And it will just remember the last thing you're in. So if you, if you went F12 and you didn't start in the console, it's because that probably wasn't the last thing that you um, looked at. So there's also some other things as well, like performance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in here. But you want the console right here. So that means if we close this in F12, it'll open up to the console. Great. If I were on sources and I close it and I F12, oops, I F11, F12, it opens up on sources. This is for Chrome. 
So um, anyway, once you're in the console, it'll probably stay in the console. You can see that we've got an error. And what it's trying to do is say, hey, we didn't find that resource. It couldn't find that file. And then it shows you the file it was looking for. Doc0 doesn't, that doesn't exist. So because that doesn't exist, I also get further errors um, that frame is not defined. So this is the type of error, colon, and then what is extra information about it. Frame is not defined. So those are red things with the nice red X going, uh, errors. Uh, where were we? Back here. So the problem is that file doesn't exist and therefore it doesn't know what frame is because it wasn't able to load Zim. So that might be the first error you get if, if you can't find the Zim framework or libraries or if you forget one of these things. If you don't include that one, then Zim would give you an error saying you need to load CreateJS first. Okay, so uh, I saved this and now if I look back here and refresh, <clears throat> now it's showing me an empty empty frame there. If I go F12, uh, F12. Remember if you're on a laptop, F12 might, you might need function F12 or something like that. Also, you can find the console by going in Chrome anyway, more tools, developer console. So control shift I should bring it up, but there it is. De developer tools is under more tools in, in Chrome. In if you're on a Macintosh, you may need to uh, it's in your menu system and then you might have to add developer tools like download developer tools or get developer tools or turn developer tools on or something like that. Uh, otherwise, it's usually the same um, across, uh, say, Internet Explorer or well, uh, whatever, Edge and what else, Safari. Okay, so the console, we, we've said something in the console right there, Zim frame, it's coming from the docs like that. And uh, let's show you how we can log to the console. So if we come in here, we can say uh, Zog for, uh, that's the Zim's, Zim's version of log, cute, huh? Otherwise the traditional JavaScript is like this, console.log, which is quite lengthy, hello. Help. Okay, let's put in help. So that's raw JavaScript console.log help. And so if I refresh here, there it is saying help. Note that it says what line it's on, line 21. Oh, well, first of all, what file it is, debugging.html, line 21. So if we look here, this is debugging.html, line 21, console.log help. We also have Zog, which is our short form. Um, Yay. Okay, well, let's leave it lowercase, I guess. So there we are just zogging some strings. Remember that you can't just zog yay like that because it will look for a variable called yay and it won't know what that means. And so there will be some problems. But if we put quotes around it, it will just tell us that in the console. So now we refresh here. Oops. So, uh, well, there's an error. Let's see what, what that's trying to tell us. Uncaught syntax error, unexpected string at line 22. So in line 22, line 22, zog yay. Oh, uh, I, I some, somehow put something bad on the end of that. I meant to hit the semicolon, but I accidentally hit maybe a single quote and Adam will automatically put two of them for you. So it didn't know what that string was and it told me that there was an error there. So that's great. I used the error to figure that out. Woohoo! All right, let's put the semicolon there. That's what I meant to do. And then we'll refresh here. And now it shows up here. And look, we have help and we have yay. This is on line 21 and on line 22, it says yay. Yay. So sometimes we just zog things to see uh, if it's what we expect. So say we do something like um, const, now let's go let x equal 20. Um, x. Say we do something like times equals 30, or well, times equals 20. So x is equal to time x. Oh, I was going to just do x times equals. Is that all I need? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's all I need. Say we don't, we're not sure what that's going to do to x. Does that work? 
I can't remember. Will that just take x and multiply it by 20 and assign it back to x? It looks kind of weird. Is that is that what we're is that is that right? I can't remember. So what we could do is we could say zog x so that we could find out what x is. And then we refresh here. It, it made 400. Oh, so that is what it does. So this just takes 20, multiplies it by x and assigns it back to x. Wow, okay, and now we know that. Um, you see what's happening is on each line we're getting the zog and it tells us the line number. Sometimes if you have too many zogs you can get a little bit confused and uh, one of the things that we added to Zim which was a lot of fun, if we add red there or zog r for red, watch what happens. Ready? Dum dum dum. Ooh, it puts a little red Z next to the thing that we're zogging. So any of the Zim colors and even some more of that can go. So there's orange, zog orange, zog pink, zog blue, zog green, zog yellow. Okay, uh, there's also zog light and zog dark, I think, something like that. I hardly ever use those. Um, usually I just sort of toggle, hey, there's a zog pink, let's have a look at that. And I might do red if it's something I really wanted a warning on, but otherwise I just choose whichever color I feel like at the time. And when I look at here, I go, oh, okay, there's the, there's the purple one. Maybe it depends on how big your code is. Sometimes you're working up at the top of your code, which comes first, and then down later you had a bunch of other zogs. But uh, remember, you can always comment out your zogs. Comment, comment, or multi-line comment. So I selected both those lines and I hold shift and, or sorry, control, uh, or was it alt? Uh, no, it's control. <laughs> my controls and my alts are, uh, might be, might be alt. Whatever, my, my control and my alt is um, reversed. Uh, I swapped them on my keyboard. But anyway, uh, and then a slash, forward slash, and that will comment out multiple lines. All right, should we try another? What if we put an equal sign there? It's like, uh oh, that's that's not going to work. So when we refresh here, there is an unexpected token. So these symbols, I guess, are called tokens, and it, it's telling us where roughly where that is. It's basically saying star equals cannot go after equals. We you know we might have been trying to do that or whatever, but these two things don't go together. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, so that's the idea there. Um, so simplifying. Simplifying is a little bit harder to tell you, you know, what we're doing exactly. But imagine if we had a lot of code. Let, why don't we go dig up some code? That might help us. So um, here's some motion controller code. Is there much in here? Okay, yeah, all right. So I've got some motion controller code, There's, you know, a, rel a bunch here. And say um, say we forgot a bracket somewhere, like, uh, I don't know, right there. Let's see what happens. So sometimes it will tell us, uh, brackets are tricky. Uh, so I want to open up that code, open in browser. Here's the code, it's all broken, and I go F12, and it says missing a a round bracket on line 30. Looks like it's gonna be able to figure out what line. So 30 is sort of saying, um, if I had a round bracket here, I should see a round bracket somewhere before I try and get to all of these things. Problem was, it's not really missing a round bracket. And that's, that's another tricky thing about these error messages. Sometimes it doesn't know. It thinks it wants to see a round bracket, but the round bracket is actually down here for it. So we have the round bracket. The problem is, is we got to this stuff before we put a squiggly bracket. So it didn't know that. All right, so that's not the kind of squiggly bracket that I want. Maybe it's it's often in, uh, often what happens is something like this, function test, and you put a single round bracket, but forget you don't close it and you're not really sure where, okay, so. Imagine that we had that. Let's see what the error message now says. Uncaught, unexpected token round bracket at 61. So what is that? So it's 61. 
you're going, okay, line 61, it's saying that uh, it got an unexpected round bracket. Um, I suppose the reason is, here, here's where that was going to happen. This is the round bracket right here. And then we've got a parameter here and then a function that goes from here all the way down to here. And there's the end of the round bracket. But the problem is this, this thing, which was closing that outer function, is now trying to close this test that we put in here. So this bracket now goes with this bracket and we no longer have that other squiggly bracket uh, available to us. So it said that the error is way down here, but really the error was kind of up here. So, I don't know, sometimes what you can do is you can just say, well, okay, if I get rid of some of the code, will it still cause a problem? So let's, let's try doing that, simplifying. Uh, first of all, let me put it back to how it was. So this is how it was. And we sort of know, as I'm looking at this, I go, okay, this is the end of the script here. This is, you know, the next thing all of this stuff should be inside of something. Here's the script. And then here's our, this is uh, us getting the frame. Here's us saying frame.onready. So we're quite used to the fact that everything in this script should be inside of this frame.ready. It should all be indented, which it is. And that's where it ends. So if I want to simplify, I could say, okay, let's keep the stage.update and let's comment out this code. I could go to here, comment, comment. So I commented out all of this code because we're not sure where the error is. Somewhere in there, there's an error and we don't know. So we comment it all out. Here's, here's what it looked like. Remember, we don't know where the error is because it told us it was just at the end. And we're looking at the end and we're going, well, there's no error at the end. I don't know what you're talking about. You're wrong. <laughs> and so we have to find out, try and find out where that error is. So we comment out all of that stuff and just leave the basic frame, basically. So we save that and now I refresh. Oh. Save that and now I refresh here. So when I refresh, it works again. Okay, so that tells us that everything is good so far, but somewhere we had a mistake. So let's bring in some other ones. So sometimes what you can do is you can say, okay, well, let's just bring back half of them or something. So we bring back this batch right here. So we've left all of this stuff commented out and we brought back some more stuff that we want to test. So we save that and we go here. Oh, we got the error. Okay, so... I mean, that would be one way where you sort of go half and half. It's almost called a binary search. Are you ready for this? I'm just going to say something to you. You take half your code and comment it out and check to see the top half. If it, if it works, that means something in the second half is broken. If it doesn't work, that means something in the first half is broken. Now, you have to be a little bit careful about how you do your comments because sometimes you can go across functions. So you have to make sure that you keep blocks of code together. You can't cut a block of code in half. That's actually what our error is here, is we, uh, a block of code is being cut in half, kind of, or being cut. So anyway, for the most part, um, you comment out a bunch and decide which side is broken. And if you do it, there, there's another way to do it too. The other way to do it would be, um, so this is, this is where we were before. I remember we had, we had everything commented out except for the beginning. All right, so we save that up. And once again, just to remind you, there it is working, so that's good. So the other way to do it was, okay, let's bring back this line. Oh, not delete it. Let's bring back this line. Does it work still? And you refresh. Okay, it still works. Let's bring back these lines. Does it work still? Okay, it still works. But that, that would be slower because you'd, you'd be testing, you know, 10, 20, 30 things or so. Um, whereas if you do what's called the binary search, where you check half and half and half and half and half, you'll narrow it down faster. That's the fastest way to be able to narrow down where the bug is. 
Okay. So in the end, we would say, well, you know, there's not all that much here. As soon as we release this, basically this worked. Okay. As you can see, that worked. And now, but if I refresh now, it doesn't work. So it's sort of obvious. Oh, it's this line has caused the problem. This was working. As soon as I bring back this, it doesn't work. Like I said, just watch. Um, this was supposed to be a function that needs to end. The reason why is that needs an end. As soon as I do that, for instance, this will work. It works again. It just was missing its last bracket and it got confused because it thought this was the last bracket, but it wasn't. All right, anyway, that's um, probably about as far as I'll go, I think, on that. That is uh, a... An example of simplifying. Hopefully I did that right. Um, the other thing is indenting. I'm just looking at this now and there's a problem here. You see with the indenting has is off. So I'm not sure why. I, I can't remember. Maybe I'll just do multiple undos until we get back to the beginning here. Okay, yeah, it was just broken. The indenting was off. I must have copied something in there. That can really mess you up in your debugging and stuff. It looks like there's a bracket here because this is now indented. That That's in the wrong place. Now it's, I guess, right. But still, all of this stuff really isn't shouldn't be indented. It should go back to here. Like No. Looks like this was copied from somewhere. So fix that stuff. So if you have something that came from somewhere else, your indenting may be a little bit off because, well, depending on your editor and how your editor works, that's an on mouse down. There's a bracket there. And so these things get indented from, uh, if you can see all that. Hang on. Oh, I almost had it there. So um, there's the bracket. Here's the bracket. This stuff is inside of this function right here. So that gets indented. This stuff's not, so it gets outdented, but there's another function there. Anyway, we weren't doing that apparently. So we had a bit of broken indenting there. You will make coding, I would say, I don't know, it's almost like certainly debugging, but coding itself is about a tenth harder if you don't indent properly, maybe even a twentieth harder. Okay, so, uh, or, you know, something like a quarter harder if you don't keep your indenting. With Zim, it's a little bit tricky because we do a lot of chaining. So chaining, we indent as well. So chaining isn't necessarily officially supposed to be indented. I'm not sure. But what happens is if I go like this, that this is my next line. Say I go um, const x is equal to 10 there. You see what happened? As soon as I hit enter there in Adam, it it thinks that I'm still at this level, but I'm not really, I should be back here. So you have to, I have constantly fighting with my Adam editor. I wish they would fix that. Um, so that if I chain like this and indent my chaining, it should know that the next thing I put, I've already got the semicolon there that I've ended that. The next thing I should put is back here outdented one or like at the same level as that. So um, that makes sometimes Zim a little bit tricky when it comes to indenting, but otherwise it's going to be the same as everything and, and actually chaining's not specific to Zim. Other, other Anybody can chain. Um, we do our indenting inside of object literals there. So there's, uh, we don't have to, all this could be on one line and sometimes people put it on one line but uh, then you'll run out of space. The nice, one of the nice things about having multi-line is now, oops, now we're in trouble because we can't, we can't do that. We can't put that comment right here on in between the rest of the stuff. Whereas if we put it on one line, like we had it before, we can comment out things, then it's fine. Well, as long as we put that there. So we can comment this line, even though that line is within the squiggly brackets of the object literal. This is an object literal. This is the property name, property value, property name, property value. And remember that since we have Zim Duo techniques where we can pass in an object literal to many things, a single parameter is an object literal, or do single parameters like that's just 
uh, well, sorry, normal parameter. So this is a normal parameter. Is with there's one parameter. Here's the next parameter. It's on multi multiple lines, etc. So uh, this is the Zim Duo technique that we talked about in the Zim Basics. Uh, and because we use that a fair bit, that means we often will drop those onto multiple lines like that. So that's uh, us keeping our indenting, saying that all this stuff is inside of these brackets. All of the stuff that you see here, all of this stuff is inside of these brackets. From here down to here. Okay, so that's why they're all on one line going up, except for chaining. And of course, anywhere where we've got another set of brackets and functions. So function test like that. Oops, that's the tab and the bracket mean. There we go. And I start typing in here. If I had another function inside here, which could do test two, test e, oopsies, test two, we'll call it. Uh, usually you don't need to declare functions within functions. As a matter of fact, ES linting will suggest that you don't do that. Stick it back out here. But uh, anyway, there you go. Okay, so we would indent anything in here. So indenting is an important part of uh, debugging. It helps you figure out um, where problems are. And remember, as I said, we can cut things in half, but when you cut things in half, don't, don't comment out that because you've left the bracket. So that's what I mean by cutting in half. You see how this is a block of code in here? Do not comment out this much and leave the end. And, and likewise, don't comment out this much and leave the beginning part right here. Uh, that won't be matched. So when you're, when you're doing that commenting out, you have to make sure that you include the whole block there. Not only that, it is possible that you're commenting out a function. So if we add that function test, uh, function test, there it is, that has to do something. Down below, maybe we call test here. Test. Okay, so now if you were to do your commenting and you went, okay, let's comment out this stuff, comment, and you go to run it, well, obviously, test is going to be broken because you were calling it here, but you've commented out. So those are some of the things that you have to look out for when you do that um, simplifying, as, as we say. All right. Um, there is something called a debugger, and I suppose since we're talking about debugging, I can't even remember how to do it. Uh, something like double clicking in here. Um, I don't know. Some, somehow you can right click and turn debugger on. Anyway, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to use it. I've never used a debugger and I've been coding for, oh, I don't know, 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, something like that anyway. And I have never really missed a debugger. I've been shown it in engineering. We kind of um, got shown it, et cetera. And I just decided it was not worth the bother. If you are becoming um, a professional software engineer or something like that, you're working in big teams and they're all using debuggers and you feel totally left out, then learn how to use a debugger. <laughs> uh, if you're beginning to code, this is Zim Basics. We're just teaching you how to start code. Don't you worry about um, these things called debuggers. I really don't think they're going to help you. Uh, we can probably do everything just fine by zogging the console. The console is very important that we see that so that we can see where our errors are. Uh, debuggers allow you to sort of set these checkpoints or whatever, and so you run the code and it will keep on stopping at the checkpoints to see if you've got everything right so far. So in theory, uh, yeah, maybe it might be good, but I've always managed with just um, the tips that I've shown you so far. Why don't we take a look at those tips to see which ones we forgot to talk about, though, in our Zim Basics. Uh, also, I hope I'm not going too quickly for you. I know it was a little bit tricky doing all of that commenting out, and I, I got excited about things, but uh, hopefully you were able to follow along there. And remember, anytime you want, you can just put this on pause and go get a cookie. I come back and watch a little bit more later. Watch it more than once as well, uh, if you so desire. Okay, so I was going to go out and take a look at the tips. So once again, those are in the gold bars. Oh, this is a long page to scroll down, though. There they are, tips. And let's have a look over the missing right here. This is that first one that I was mentioning to you. Oh, dear. 
So if something doesn't show up, you know, your code's working, but here are some reasons. Well, one, if the whole page doesn't show up, the internet might be down. Uh, also, you might get um, something like an in your F12, it might say frames, not a function. Remember that one? We looked at that. <clears throat> so you could have an error. Look for messages in red. If you have images or sound, then you might get a cores error. And there's a solution to that. When you're looking at local images and sounds, you might get a red error saying there's a cores or permission error. And that's a safety thing. They don't want people looking locally at Canvas code that has images and sound that they don't know about because uh, apparently, I don't know, you can hide, um, uh, what's it called, not bugs, uh, what is it called when you hack people, uh, viruses or something like that. But if you're using your own images and sounds, uh, then there's no problem. It's actually kind of really annoying for us content creators or we content creators. So uh, there is a solution to that, nice easy solution though that you can do. Uh, to overcome that error. All right, so if I right click here and open in a new tab, uh, here it is. So there's a security error for cores. What you can do on Chrome is um, find your shortcut and you'll find a place in the shortcut that says this. You just put this on the end of it. Well, it's a, a long thing and there's a space right there. So space, allow file access from files. And then if you start your Chrome from that shortcut, you're good. Okay, uh, and that's that's what I do. Um, it comes up every once in a while. The problem is, is I'm in Atom, and if I go right-click open in browser, and I hadn't already opened my browser from that shortcut, then it won't work. I'll go, oh, you know, what happened? Oh my, oh my, I'll look at the console. It's the first thing you do when nothing shows up. You look at the console and you go, oh, the core's error. So I have to close all my browsers, like close all my Chrome, start it from that uh, little icon or from the, you know, the shortcut that has that put on it. And then it works. And then I can open it up. Uh, you know, once I've opened it up from the shortcut, then I can right click and say open in browser here. And it will just open in the same browser that I had opened and we're all good to go. Okay. Um, so that is another possible error that you might get when working on the canvas. And what am I looking for? Debugging. Nope. Tips. Yep. And here. Hmm. Indenting. Ah, oh, here's a whole thing on indenting, by the way. So why we should be indenting. Let's go to the top and figure out where we were. Where is that tip on indenting? Right here. Indenting. Yep. So missing. Mm, right, this is the most common one. Oh, second, the most common one. The most common one is you forgot to use stage.update. So remember, this is debugging when something is missing. So let's go back to our debugging here and imagine that we go new circle dot center. Uh, we don't have that, <laughs> okay, which is part of the template. And now if I, I'm going to open this up in Browser Plus. Hey, wait just a minute. Why do I see that circle? It's interesting. It has no stage.update. Must have pulled a, res, a resize on it. So oh, let's try open in Browser. Oh, it does. That's funny. F12. Okay. Well, um... Why is it showing? We've got no stage.update. That shouldn't show. Hmm. It's magical. Must be something in the center that I'm doing to show in Zim. Uh, let's do dot tap. So if we tap on it, we'll call that arrow function. And then we'll also put this in a variable. Const circ is equal to, and we'll say circ dot remove from well this isn't what sh a problem with showing there I tap it and note that it's still there it's like oh it's broken you know arg and I'm going to look at my console and no error and I don't know why it won't go away as a matter of fact I can't even seem to tap it anymore it, it... but watch this you ready 
as soon as I resized, it showed up. So that's what I mean by uh, it looks like there's a little bit of a, uh, a stage dot update on the resizing as it fit that in the browser window. So that's interesting. I thought the first stage dot update though was needed, but it looks like maybe the resizing or fitting into the the window is is, is doing that stage dot update for us. But the, the problem is, is this stage dot update, even if we had a stage dot update there, that's not the issue. There it is. I tap it and it, it's still there. So this is a bug. It's like, all right, that's supposed to go away. I told it to remove. Why isn't it removing? So the first thing you might do is zog removing. Okay. It's So this is how zogging is helpful to you. How do you know that you're even in this function. What if you did the tap wrong or did this part wrong? So especially when you're beginning, um, you may not even use the tap. You might be using, this will be the same as a circ.on uh, click, or it's very similar to that. Click, call this arrow function like that. So either one, um, we could do the same thing in there and not do this part. Okay, so we could have centered a circle and put a click event on it. Same thing will happen. Uh, well, I don't get my for click. We would want a cursor there to show that it has a cursor. Now I get a cursor. I click. No cursor anymore. It's like it's not there yet. Watch. Okay. So um, either of those same same situation. But did we did we get in here? Like, is it? capturing the click or is it capturing the tap? Uh, how do we know? We look at the the um, the console and sure enough, it says removing. So that's good. On line 36, the console tells us it's here. It's here. We're running this function, but it's still not removing. And we're scratching our head. And then you might go onto the tips and say, oh gosh, we forgot the stage dot update. All right, so now if we put our stage.update there, uh, then watch what happens. It updated. Okay, so we had one here, but that's not at the same time. This happened first, earlier. This happens when we click. So after we click, if something changes, after we click, if something changes and we want to see that change, we maybe didn't remove it, maybe we added another one. Um, new rectangle. Uh, dot add two with an O. Okay, same deal. Click that. Where's the rectangle? Watch. So what is happening here is when I do a resize, the stage dot update is triggering, and that stage dot update then draws a rectangle. But until the stage dot update happens, no rectangle. If we bring in the stage dot update, rectangle right away. Another thing that might um, adjust that is rollovers. So sometimes there's a rollover and the rollover will do a stage.update. Okay. Anyway, that's a, a very common one. Uh, the other one that it mentioned there is if we don't even add it to the stage like this, there we go. Then we're not going to see it even if we have a stage.update down here. There's the circle and we're going where is it? Where is it? Well, we have to make sure that we add it. Um, so that's either with center or it could be pose or loc. Pose 20, 20. We'll pose it 20 and 20 from the edge like that. Whereas a loc will locate the registration point. The registration point of a circle is in the middle. So we'll put the, the it'll put the middle of the circle right here. Okay. So that's a difference. And remember, pose, you can position it around as well. 2020 20 from the right, like that. We'll pose it 20 from the right and 20 from the top, but you can also do the bottom. And we're talking about debugging though, so this isn't really debugging, but what if you put something like bottom? What do you think will happen? Lowercase bottom. Ah, so here's here's one of those cases where it doesn't seem totally broken, but I don't see something. So that's when we go to our errors and say, oh, bottom is not defined. 
bottom is lowercase variable. We need uppercase bottom. Okay, so that's the Zim constant. The, uh, up, when they're uppercase like that, that means they're a constant. Right and bottom. Or we could have put quote bottom. And that would have been fine too. Same thing. Actually, uppercase bottom with no quotes is equal to quote bottom. All right. Good. Let's have a look back there. And remember, if this is too much for your brain, we've been talking for too long. How long have we been talking? 45 minutes. Then you're welcome to put it on pause and come back and continue on. So we are looking at this tips. So when adding to a container, remember to add the container to the stage. Sometimes you add things to a container and you're all happy. You're oh, I'm going to put these 10 monsters in a container. Yay. And then nothing shows up and you're going, uh, well, remember to add the container to the stage. Okay. Um, the thing that's missing might be underneath something else. So remember that there are levels. Sometimes if you, if you add a, a rectangle, and so let's bring back our rectangle here. Where was our rectangle? Const rect. Note, by the way, kinst, whatever that is, it doesn't go blue like const, but const goes blue. So uh, you should watch the coloring of these. They'll help you figure out what's happening sometimes. So const rect is equal to a new rectangle. And if you put this at the same place, then uh, space doesn't matter, but it doesn't look very good. Then it's sort of like, my circle's missing, my circle's missing. Oh, whoa, my circle's missing. Well, okay, it's underneath there. So if your circle were, I don't know, 50 in red like that, I uh, still can't see it, okay? Um, but if we put this dot bot like that, bot is a way to put it at the bottom or underneath then it's just put it under underneath layer. So now our rectangle is underneath the circle. Or there's also dot ord like that, minus one. So that means take it wherever it is and put it one layer earlier. And that does the same thing. This will not work though. Um, dot top or something like that. Uh, it's gone because at the time, so at the time, we put it on the top, but then we add this and it came on top of that. <laughs> so uh, it's not like that will always be on the top. It just means put it on the top of the current stack. Okay, so that doesn't work. The other thing, of course, we can do, as often we do, is just make this one first. So now we've made the rectangle first and the rectangles underneath the circle. Um, you might be animating something using milliseconds rather than seconds. So remember that Zim is now in seconds. And if you, uh, if you said something like 1000, thinking that you've, you're animating it for a thousand milliseconds, that's actually going to be 1000 seconds. And so it's not going to animate onto the stage because it's going to take 1000 seconds to animate onto the stage. So uh, that might happen. And then there's a final rule. The, this last one right here is the Zen five minute rule. I am Dan Zen as well as Dr. Abstract. And this has been my rule from programming for quite some time. If you're debugging for more than five minutes and you can't figure out why you can't fix it, it's like, oh, this isn't doing what I'm supposed to be doing. If you've been debugging for more than five minutes, remember, check to see if you're on the right file. So sometimes when people begin, especially if they're in school, they'll keep backups of things or they'll make a directory here called yesterday or not yesterday, but some date. And then now they're working in a different folder called a second date. But by accident, they went and they loaded the thing from the previous date or something. And they're, they're looking at the wrong file. So always make sure you're looking at the right file. And one way to do that is like so. So if I'm in debugging here, and this is where uh, I'm trying to show it, if I were working in the wrong file and I did something like uh, zog, even just this, zog pink, there, like that. Remember zog pink? Watch, I refresh here 
And if I view the, the console, here's the console, I see a pink. If I were working in the wrong file, I wouldn't see a pink. So you always got to make sure that you're working on the, wrong, the right file. Because sometimes a bug, um, there's nothing really that you can see. It's a, it might be broken, so you can't see anything. You'll still see stuff in the console, though. Okay, so you can always console. And if that stuff in the console is, to, is not there, then you're working in the wrong file. You're, you're viewing the wrong file. You might be working in the right file, but you're viewing a different file. And that's happened to many, many people. And it's one of the hardest things to, to solve if, if you don't just think of it. So after five minutes of debugging, make sure that you're working in the file that you think you're working in. Along those lines, of course, uh, hopefully after after five minutes of working on something, you've remembered to save it. But remember, if if I if I make some changes, so say we delete that pink there, and then I go here and I refresh, uh, and I look at the console, uh, the pink is still there, or whatever it may be. Perhaps it's something on the stage that should be gone, or something on the stage that should be there. Well, do you see what's happened? Here I'm refreshing. It's like, come on, where is it? Uh, it's, it's not showing up or whatever. It's because I've got a little blue dot right there. This little blue dot says I have not saved the file. So that's certainly uh, one in the debugging. It might be in here. You're viewing the wrong file. Did I have? Probably should add. Make sure you've saved the file. Huh? Yeah, that should be added to there. I'm sure that it's in the other one right here. Let's go under, well, maybe it's not Zog. So here's a bit on Zog. The browsers have a console, F12, and we've seen that. Okay, so Zog's a handy way. It's a short form for console.log. Great, and there's colored Zogs too, Zog red, Zog blue, so there are the colors. If you're in a function, if, if uh, functions are a block of code that do something, and often you do a lot of things in a function, and that's where your bugs will be, or, you know, or you're trying to do something and it's not working. So one of the things you should do is just make sure that that function is running. Do that right at the beginning. If you're, if you're starting up code, if you just zog at the top of your function that this function's running, then you'll know, okay, the function's running. Because it's a pain in the neck to sort of be debugging everything in your function, and that function's not even running. It's this sort of like the, the page isn't saved, you know, same kind of deal. You're trying to debug something, and nothing seems to be working, is because the function's not even running. So um, test right in the top of a function. So here it is. There's your function test, zog, test. Then when you run it, you know that it's running properly if that shows up in your console. Same with if you've got a, um, an event object like a click. Sometimes we have callback functions. When we finish animating, call this thing. Well, you could zog in there to find out that the that function is indeed running. And tickers as well. Just be careful with tickers. If you add, add a function to a ticker and zog in it, it's going to zog really, really fast and a lot. Blah, 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 blah. And eventually it'll slow down your whole app and bog your computer because you just typing too many words there. So usually turn it on. Oh, it's working. Okay, stop that and then un uh, comment it out. Uh, you can zog in intervals, times out, and loops as well to just make sure that you're, you've got what you're, what you're ha what's happening there. All right, the last bit of today. Yay, last bit. I'll try and keep this under an hour. The last bit is just on these types of errors that you're getting. So let's have a, have a look here. If the line number is at the end of the file, then a bracket is probably missing somewhere. It's not necessarily at the end. I think we saw that. So that's annoying. You have to make sure that you match your brackets and that will often happen. Both round brackets and squiggly brackets and square brackets, they all should have a matching end. If the error is a type error, uh, null, then you may be trying to set a property or run a function on it. Uh, okay, yeah, so cannot um, accomplish this on null. That's what we'll say. Cannot run center on null. And you think that there's something wrong with center, that you won't be able to center it, but what it really means is the object that you have that on doesn't exist. So for instance, um, uh, square dot uh, center like that. So there I am trying to center the square. So when I refresh here, I, I should get an error. Let's have a look. 
Uh, well, that one was easier. Square is not defined. Okay, so didn't quite do it. Um, what if I go const? Oh, well, I can't go const. I'll go let square. So now square is defined. And let's see what we get now. I refresh. And I lost my console. There it is. Cannot read property center of undefined. So you're looking at it going, okay, is there something wrong with center? And that's not the case. It's not the case. It means that this is undefined right here. This is null or undefined. So it's not a problem with that. It's a problem with the object that it's on. There's nothing in it. See how we haven't put anything in square. Square doesn't have a rectangle in it. Okay, so just uh, watch out for that type of thing. Um, if the error is a uh, zim container underscore constructor is not a function, remember the new keyword. Oh yeah, okay, so that, that gets me sometimes. I don't know, I, on occasion I'll do this const um, square is equal to, oh, a rectangle. Yeah, let's make that a rectangle, 100 by 100 comma uh, red dot center, something like that. And I go refresh and it gets this weird error message saying, cannot read property zim custom shape constructor of undefined. And you're going, what? <laughs> what? Or any of these things like a circle, a rectangle, a frame, any, any class, if you forget the new keyword when you make the object, it, it says something like that. All right, it's a weird thing. So what we need here is new rectangle, new keyword rectangle. Type error is not a constructor. Um, oh yeah, that happens um, if you call these things the same name. Circle is equal to that. So what we've just done is, and it's a, a good beginner's mistake, const circle is equal to a new circle. Sounds good. Well, what you've just done is now I won't even be able to find what new circle is, this class of circle, because I've just overwritten it with my constant here. It obscures it. It doesn't know how to get to it anymore because we named the variable the same. So you want a lowercase there so that they're different. That's fine. Or I use rect for rectangle and circ for circle because they both have four, word, or four letters quite often. But anyway, that, that's the same with anything const button. I, would, I don't always use but. <laughs> um, I'll use button is equal to a new button. Okay, that's fine. Or if you can, you say what that button's for, like save. Const save is equal to a new button. Um, but sometimes if I'm just demonstrating and I don't really have a reason for the button or a reason for the circle or a reason for the rectangle, then I'll call them generic names like that. Just make sure you don't start with the capital letter. Um, that will give us an error. Cannot access button before initialization. And you're going, oh, I don't know what that means. Ah. Anyway, but like that, you're fine. No error. Boop, boop. No button either. Why don't we see a button? Because we didn't go dot center or whatever. And there's our button centered, but underneath the square. We're almost there. Uh-oh, did we hit an hour? Not quite. Let's end this. Invalid assignment of const. Remember to not recall your const. So once you've made a const or a let, you can't use the same word again. And all that sounds pretty good. I think we've done it. Let's uh, finish that off. This has been a Zim Basics, and I am Dr. Abstract. Uh, come visit us, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. Have a great day or night, and look forward to more basics. Cheers.